Hi friends, I hope you all are doing great. It's me, Nikki here. And today I want to talk to you about how to make the most out of working from home. So let's get started. So friends, I want to talk about some strategies that you can use working from home because, you know, initially on the surface, everyone thinks working from home is this just wonderful thing. You know, you can go walk your dog or you can listen to movies while you work or you can just go do laundry uh, while you have your work day. But one thing that is also a disadvantage from working from home is that oftentimes you're alone and you can get a bit stir crazy as just being you and your home office day after day, week after week. And so I really want to share some work from home strategies with you that could be helpful to you. So friends, tip number one is to stick to a schedule. Get up the same time every day, keep the same morning routine, stop work at the same time every day, have a lunch hour. You know, keeping that routine can really help keep you um, sane while working from home. So that's the first tip. So friends, tip number two is to dress effectively. So when I say that, dressing effectively when working from home can mean different things for different folks. You know, you may be a person that I need to get up, I need to put on a blouse and some slacks, and I need to feel like I'm going to the office in order for me to be productive. But then some people feel like, uh, -uh I need to get up, put on my yoga pants and my t-shirt, and that's how I feel productive. So one, I say, do what works for you. What keeps you um, productive during the work day and makes working well for you, that's what you need to do. So tip number three is so important. Deal with the people and the pets that are in the home. Because a lot of us are working from home with our families, it's important to have that communication to say, hey, between this time, you cannot disturb me or get a sign to put on your home office door. You know, create those boundaries, not only for you, but for your kids when they're learning. And the whole family needs to understand the seriousness of kind of keeping up or kind of respecting those boundaries. So it's important to have those conversations, even with your friends, you know, say, hey, you know, I'm working during this time. So please, I can't, you know, be on the phone and say, hey, I can talk after four o'clock or whatever the case may be so that you can really not have those distractions. Because a lot of times when you're working from home, everyone thinks it's free game. Your time is theirs and you can just do whatever. But, you know, setting those boundaries are going to be important, especially um, since you are working from home. Tip number four is to show your face. A lot of times working from home, we tend to do a lot of email and we'll do a lot of phone calls and things like that. But one thing you want to do is you don't want to get away from that face-to-face -face communication, even if it's via FaceTime or Zoom or anything like that, Microsoft Meet Teams or something like that. So it's important that you do, when you're having that meeting, every now and then say, hey, instead of phone call, let's do uh, uh, FaceTime or let's do Zoom. And that way you then get that interaction with your coworkers, your clients, and it really can help keep a better relationship because a lot of times, you know, email, you can't um, detect tone. And so that can be one issue along with you know day after day you can disconnect from your team members if you don't get on camera and get that face-to-face -face, um, time. Tip number five is to schedule those breaks. It is important to schedule work breaks during your day and that's time that you can use to step away from your home office and go outside take a brief walk go check on the kids you know you even may want to go put a load of laundry in in the washing machine so that you feel like you're accomplishing something and you're walking around so you want to step away from that work environment at home and take those breaks you know I recommend you have to take what you know your employer kind of recommends for you but ideally if you have a flexible employer which most often from home you do you know take one in the morning and then take one in the afternoon and that's really an important thing for you to implement in your work day because you need that refresher you need that time away from the home office desk and another thing that you can do is break up that time. So in the morning, you want to maybe want to work from your desk, but then in the afternoon, you know, take a break and then use your mobile office, grab it and go work on the back patio to give yourself a different environment. And that can really help with your work day. 
Tip number six is to get out of the house. It is important to step away from your home and go get some fresh air. Go drive and get a Starbucks coffee or go sit at a park, even if you sit in your car and just kind of enjoy the sunshine hitting your face, you know. Just go out of the home and get some fresh air because that is really going to change your, you know, mental health, physical health, um, getting out of the home. You don't want to get into a routine of waking up, staying home, working from home, and then, you know, staying home in the evening with the family and never leaving the house. So, you know, make that time during your day to step outside. And it may be about going to lunch, you know, actually physically going somewhere and picking up your lunch and then coming back. So tip number seven is to communicate more. You know, when you're not communicating face to face, it communication can be less effective. It goes back to that. You can't detect tone. Um, if you're sending an email, you know, everyone gets all of these emails. And so it can be um, kind of a little pushed back. But it's nothing like that face to face. So when you're working from home, you have to make an extra effort with communications and to com communicate more clearly when you're typing that email. You want to make sure that what you're communicating is really reaching that person. And so one thing about working from home is it does require you to put more into your communication so that you can be effective. So just really ha you have to beef up that communication. So tip number eight is to have a dedicated work area. This is so key because you need that place to come to in the morning that says, hey, you are at work. Even if you go during lunch and you go work on the back patio or you change up your work environment, that's fine. But when you start out your day and when you end your day, you need a specific work area, a place that you can work from. You know, working from the kitchen table can be a struggle because that's a place that the family needs. You know, working from common areas in the home, I don't advise that because what it does is it invades that personal space. So you really want to carve out that space in your home that not only that can be your workspace, but a space that your family can respect one that they can understand that this is your workspace so let's not disturb it and so that is really important especially working from home you know finding that um, work room or that work table that is going to be your space and tip number nine is to get some exercise because what we don't realize is when you work outside of the office you get more exercise than you think you're working up you're walking up to the stairs in the office building you're walking to your co-workers office back and forth going to the mailbox or to the copier even though it's not ideally a workout you know during our work day we do have more activity when we work outside of the office you have to walk to the car you have to walk to lunch you know but when you work from home that reduces significantly. So what you have to do is you have to incorporate some of that activity that you normally had outside of the office into your work day and into what you do now. So it may be about, you know, not having your copier on your desk where you just have to lift it up. Maybe put your copier across the room so whenever you print something, you physically have to get up. I know that's the case for me in my home office. The copier is by the window, so it requires me to get up every time I print and, and have that motion. Another thing is having your um, watch. If you have an Apple watch or um, some type of watch that can monitor your steps and things like that, kind of use that as a motivator to help you kind of get up and to get moving um, to, and commit to some type of extra activity to keep you from um, just sitting at the desk. So friends, I want you to enjoy working from home. I just really want you to be aware of some things that can really start kind of taking a toll on you if you don't you kind of pay attention to it earlier or implement things to keep it from happening because it's important to keep your health up both um, physically and mental and so you want to definitely incorporate a home working system that keeps you happy so i hope that the tips that i shared with you could be helpful and if you're not subscribed to the at work with nikki family i would love for you to click that subscribe button along with the bell so that you receive notifications every time i post i hope that you all are doing great i will see you at tomorrow's video and this this is Nikki saying goodbye.